Hi, welcome back. In the last lesson, we looked at uh, linear regression, the problem of predicting not a nominal class value, but a numeric class value, the regression problem. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how to use regression techniques for classification. It sounds a little bit weird, but regression techniques can be really good under certain circumstances. And we're going to see if we can apply them to classific ordinary classification problems. So in a two-class problem, it's quite easy, really. We're going to call the two classes 0 and 1, and just use those as numbers, and then come up with a regression line uh, that presumably for most 0 uh, instances has got a pretty low value, and for most 1 instances has got a larger value, and then come up with a threshold for determining whether if it's less than that threshold, we're going to predict class 0. If it's greater, we're going to predict class 1. If we want to generalize that to more than two classes, we can use a separate regression for each class. We set the output to 1 for instances that belong to the class and 0 for instances that don't. And then come up with a separate regression line for each class. And given an unknown test example, we're going to choose a class with the largest output. That would give us n regressions for uh, a problem where there are n different classes. We could uh, alternatively use pairwise regression, take every pair of classes, that's n squared, n squared over 2, and uh, have a linear regression line for each pair of classes, discriminating a class one of that pair from the other of that pair. Anyway, we're going to work with a two-class problem. and We're going to uh, just investigate two-class classification by regression. I'm going to open diabetes. And then I'm going to convert the class. Well, actually, let's just try and apply regression to this. I'm going to try the regression, linear regression. And you see it's grayed out here. That means it's not applicable. I can actually select it, but I can't start it. It's not applicable because linear regression applies to a data set where the class is numeric, and we've got a data set where the class is nominal. So we need to fix that. We're going to change this from these two labels to 0 and 1, respectively. And we'll do that with a filter. We want to uh, change an attribute. It's unsupervised. And uh, uh, we want to change a nominal to a binary attribute, actually. That's a nominal to binary filter. And uh, we want to apply that to the ninth attribute. This will apply to all of the attributes. Let's go apply it to the ninth attribute. And I'm hoping it will change this attribute from uh, nominal to binary. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It doesn't have any effect. And the reason it doesn't have any effect is these attribute filters don't work on the class value. So if I just change it, I can change the class value here. So we're going to give this no class. So now this is not uh, the class value for the data set. Run the filter again. And now I've got what I want. This uh, attribute class is either 0 or 1. In fact, this is the histogram. There are this number of zeros and this number of 1s, uh, which corresponds to the two different values in the original data set. Now we've got our linear regression, and uh, we can just uh, run it. And uh, this is the regression line. So it's a line. 0.02 times the pregnancy attribute, plus this times the class attribute, plus so on, plus this times the age attribute, plus this number. That will give us a number for any given instance. And we can see that number if we select Output Predictions and run it again. And uh, here's a table of predictions for each instance in the data set. This is the instance number. This is the actual class of the instance, which is 0 or 1. This is the predicted class, which is a number. Sometimes it's less than 0. And we would hope that these numbers are generally fairly small for zeros and generally larger for uh, ones. And they sort of are, although it's not really easy to tell. This is just the error value here in the fourth column.
So I'm going to do a more extensive investigation here, and you might ask why are we bothering to do this. First of all, it's an interesting idea that I want to explore. It will lead to quite good performance for classification by regression, and it will lead into the next lesson on logistic regression, which is an excellent uh, classification technique. And perhaps most importantly, we'll just learn how to do some cool things with the Weka interface. So my strategy is to add a new attribute, I'm going to call it classification, that gives this number here, this predicted number. And then we're going to use 1R to optimize a split point for the two classes. We'll have to restore the class back to its original nominal value, because remember I just converted it to numeric. Okay, so here it is in detail. We're going to uh, get a supervised, we're going to use a supervised attribute filter. This is actually pretty cool, I think. It's a supervised filter. It's an attribute filter. We're going to add a new attribute called classification. And we're going to choose a classifier for that. We're going to choose linear regression. That classifier, we need to set uh, output classification. And if we just run this, it'll add a new attribute to the data set. There it is. It's called classification. And it's got these numeric values, which correspond exactly to the numeric values that were predicted here by the linear regression uh, scheme. So now uh, we've got this classification attribute. And what I'd like to do now is to convert the class attribute back to nominal, because it's numeric. Because I want to use 0R now, and 0R will only work with a nominal class. So let me convert that. I want, um, I guess I want numeric to nominal. And I want to run that on attribute number 9. And uh, let me just uh, apply that. And now, sure enough, I've got the two labels, right? The labels are 0 and 1. This is a nominal attribute with these two labels. I'm not sure to make that the class attribute. Where is it gone? For the data set, then I get the colors back, the two colors for the two classes. So really I want to predict this class based on the value of classification, that numeric value. So I'm going to delete all of the other attributes. And I'm going to go to my classify panel here. And uh, I'm going to predict class. We're going to predict this nominal value class. And I'm going to use 1R. That one there. And uh, I think I'll just stop outputting the predictions, because they'll just get in the way, and run that. And here I have it, 72%, 73%. That's a bit disappointing. But actually, when you look at this, uh, 1R has produced this really overfitted rule. We want a single split point. You know, If it's less than this, then predict 0, otherwise predict 1. So we can get around that by changing this B parameter, the bucket size parameter, something much larger. I'm going to change it to 100 here and run it again. And now I've got much better performance, 77% uh, accuracy. And this is the kind of split I've got. If the classification, that is the regression value, is less than 0.47, I'm going to call it a 0. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a 1. So I've got what I wanted, classification by regression. We've extended linear regression to classification. This performance of 76.8% uh, is actually quite good for this problem. It was easy to do with two classes, 0 and 1. Otherwise, you need to have a regression for each, each class value, multi-response linear regression, or else each pair of class values, pairwise linear regression. And we learned quite a few things about Weka. We learned about uh, unsupervised attribute filters to convert nominal attributes to binary and numeric attributes back to nominal. We learned about this cool filter, Add Classification, which adds the classification according to a machine learning scheme as an attribute in the data set. We learned about setting and unsetting the uh, class of the data set. And we learned about the minimum bucket size parameter to prevent 1R from overfitting. 
So that's classification by regression. In the next lesson, we're going to do better. We're going to look at logistic regression, an advanced technique which effectively does classifying, classification by regression in an even more effective way. So we'll see you soon. Bye.